Hi, thanks for stopping by. In today's video, I'm going to be making this burial flag display case for a family who's very close to me who has recently lost a loved one. One of the main reasons many woodworkers get into this hobby in the beginning is because we want to make something that will live on for a long time, possibly even longer than we will be around. The family I'm making this for has lost someone very dear to them, but the flag they have from the burial will be around forever. And I hope this flag case will be as well. It's a special honor for me to build this for them, and I hope it will complement the flag well. The flag is the star of the show, but I certainly hope that this case will be strong enough and sturdy enough to last for generations and to proudly carry this flag. Stick along with me as I show you how I built it and what I did to overcome some obstacles. I decided to make this case out of oak. Well, actually, I didn't decide. I spoke with the family and asked if they had any preference and they thought oak would be a nice fit. I just so happened to have a piece of oak, a nice straight grain board with nice long grain lines all the way down. This would make for some great seams on the corners. This board has been in my shop now for a few years, so it is very well acclimated and I can begin working on it right away. This board was also wide enough that I could get all three pieces I need with just one cross cut. This helps me reduce waste. Now the wood selection is out of the way, I need to break it down into three equal usable pieces. First, I'll cut it to length, being sure to leave just a little bit of extra room. Next, I'll lay out the three boards that I need to cut out and a little extra on those for the milling process as well. This board is slightly bowed, so by ripping it into three smaller boards, I'll be able to remove less waste and still keep a nice uniform thickness. And once that's done, I pass each board over the joiner, taking only a little bit off with each pass. When that was finished, I put the freshly jointed face against the fence to joint the edge 90 degrees to the face. Unfortunately, I decided not to record that part. Now that I had three boards that were flat on two sides and 90 degrees to each other, I took them over to the planer to bring them down to the final thickness of three quarter inches. Again, just like at the jointer, I'm taking very shallow passes over and over and over. Well, you get it. And now I have three finished sides, two that are parallel to each other and one edge that's 90 degrees to those two. I can now take it over to the table saw and cut the final three pieces down to their final width to begin construction on the flag case. What I'm gonna show you now is I made a couple of steps without taping. One of them, I made a mistake. I recorded it, I thought I recorded it, but I took a picture instead of taking a video. That's on me. I like to say, oh, the footage disappeared. Here's my fault. So we kind of missed the most exciting part where I actually line up for the 22 and a half degree cut. So what I'm gonna do is just a little mock-up. I'm gonna show you what I made, why I made it, how I made it, and how the cuts worked on my table saw. I'm gonna bring you in real close for that. Okay, so here's the setup that I used. I'll bring you in really close in just a moment. I made a small box to go over my fence and it slides firm. There's no play, but it's not so tight that it can't slide smoothly because that's very important. I put a backer piece so that I wouldn't have my little box that I made too close to the blade as it spins. And I put a backer piece so as the cut came through, I would have a cleaner cut with less tear out. So what it looked like, even though this isn't real life anymore, I took this piece and held it in place just like that and just took some squeeze clamps. This one I actually put on the box itself. And this one I put on the kind of the seam of these two pieces. So that kept all of this nice and still. It kept everything square to the box. Turn the blade on. Of course, I have the blade set to uh, 22 and a half degrees. So I used a little digital angle finder. That worked really well. My, my saw is a um, Porter Cable 
PCBS270, I don't know, something like that. They don't make it anymore. It's the same one Steam Ramsey has, but it's got a angle indicator built in, and I've never really given a lot of you know, trust to that until I measured it with the digital angle finder, as well as a protractor, and this and that, and they all came out at 22 and a half. So for me, for my saw, this little gauge is right on. So you can kind of see my setup here. I've just got, so that clamp there, so it's nice and low, so that it's got a lot of support on the bottom. These are just a couple of pictures I took when I first pulled the pieces off the saw. I was so excited, I just wanted to try them out. And then I also didn't film gluing on the trim. But here's a picture of that as well. So here I'm just doing the final glue up. Got all my things together and I think I'm all ready. But right about here I realized I forgot to put on the painter's tape to help cut back on the squeeze out. It's okay. I thought about bailing out and wiping all the glue off, but I just pressed on. It just made a little bit more work for me on the back end, cleaning up the glue. But I thought that was a better chance than trying to take it all apart or wipe the glue off and it not come off the end grain and then it not stick. So I just went with it and it turned out okay. So then it was time for sanding. And through the miracle of fast forwarding, you don't have to watch the 40 minutes of sanding that I had to endure, but I used a battery powered sander, a plug in sander, hand sandpaper, contour sanding sponges, bamboo skewers, a scratch all. I used everything that I had in my arsenal to sand and all these tiny cracks and crevices. But I will say when I was done, I got the wood completely ready for finishing. I got all the glue squeeze out that I forgot to cover with tape. At the end of the day, the project came out fine and all was saved, all with a little bit of sanding. And here we go. I'll put a couple coats of this on, but again, this is the Watco Clear Danish Oil. Let's just take a look. Oh yeah. And here I'm just really trying to let the finish soak into each piece as much as possible. This first coat of Danish oil really gets in deep to the wood when the wood's really thirsty. And like I said, this wood's been sitting in my shop for a few years, so I know it's thirsty. So I just try to keep applying it until it doesn't look, or I, I apply it as long as it doesn't look wet meaning the wood fibers are soaking it in. Once it looks like it's starting to pull on the outside, then I kind of slow down and let it stand for a while. 